there. I did it. Mandatory video footage of the duel here at Changi Airport is complete, and now I can officially start this Singapore Airlines A350 business class review. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sandspotter YouTube channel. My name is Scott, I'm the founder and author of Sandspotter.com, and after that brief but very mandatory stop at the Jewel, I just arrived here at Terminal 2 for the 15 hour flight back to LAX. As I've already mentioned, I'm just a few hours away from experiencing Singapore Airlines A350 business class for the very first time. Don't worry, I'm not letting this get to my head because, well, my next trip is pretty much all economy class. Just like the good old days. Despite my imminent return to economy, you better believe that I'm milking this business class experience for all it's worth. The Silver Crisp Lounge here at Changi is too classy for me, but I'm here and I'm going to enjoy the heck out of it. even dare show you the collection of flavors I've assembled for this lounge visit. Things started out kind of normal, then it got weird, but I finished it off in typical sand spotter fashion with another heaping pile of chicken and rice. Remember that video footage of the jewel that I showed you earlier? I thought I was being proactive by getting it out of the way first thing, but wouldn't you rather be seeing that now instead of generic clips of the transit area? I think I need to work on my timing a bit more before the next video. Gate A15 is our departure point to LAX tonight, and one of the things I really like about Changi Airport is the security checkpoints right at the gate. It's fast, easy, and I really wish more airports did it this way. Although, there is a downside to having the security checkpoint right at the gate. Once you're in, oh, <laughs> sorry buddy. Anyway, once you're in, you're in, and there's nothing to do in here but to try and get video footage of your airplane through the annoyingly reflective glass. Walking up to the boarding door, and as usual, I'm fully expecting the cabin crew to mistake me as that QFS aviation guy. I mean, nobody knows who Sandspotter is, but QFS aviation? Who doesn't know who he is? Those of you who watched all the way to the end of my last video already know that there was going to be a holy crap, holy mother of god, and even a holy sh in this video. This is the part where those expressions go. Honestly, this seat blew me away. There's tons of storage everywhere, including this bin filled with noise-canceling headphones and water, and I'm so excited that I'm not even going to bother putting it all back correctly. This is incredible! One really interesting thing to note is that there were no amenity kits distributed. These slippers, socks, and eye masks were all we got, but because this seat is so amazing, I don't care. The goal for this evening, should I choose to accept it, is to avoid chicken and rice. I fear I may be addicted to the stuff. However, that's okay, because the menu for our flight to Los Angeles this evening is filled with what appears to be lots of other really great choices. Holy crap, holy mother of god, and holy sh <laughs> Stupid commentary aside, the Singapore Airlines A350 business class product has made quite an impression on me. Scheduled flying time across the Pacific and over to Los Angeles is 14 hours and 45 minutes. 
You know you're sitting in a good business class seat when you start to think to yourself that that might not be long enough. One of the most interesting things about this experience was the smells. Not only did this A350 smell exactly like a brand new car, it paired magnificently with the sense of dinner being prepared up in the galley. This wasn't a completely perfect experience though. Turns out that this wasn't a touchscreen, and the only way to interact with it was via this handheld remote. For a guy who likes poking at things, this was definitely a negative. Just a bit of a minor adjustment here, and combined with the beverage, I do believe that I am fully prepared for whatever is next. Turns out what was next was this chicken and lamb saute, followed up 10 minutes later by this plate of dill marinated salmon. I'm tempted to say that the salmon was better, but y'all know my feelings on chicken, right? Speaking of my feelings on chicken, I hate to say it, but this right here was the worst business class dinner entree I've had in a good long while. The quality and presentation were fine, problem was squarely on me and my unfortunate white boy inability to handle food any spicier than ketchup. Yeah, this one was spicy. Dousing the raging inferno came courtesy of this banana split eclair which did the job admirably. My taste buds were singed, and I can't even tell you what it tasted like, but Boy, was that ever soothing. Well, that didn't go quite as expected. I'm drenched in sweat, my nose is still runny, and my insides hurt. There's no telling what the aftermath from all this will be, but let's just hope we make it to LA before things get ugly. old enough to know that lying down immediately after eating a spicy meal is a recipe for disaster. However, being annoyed by the tiny footwell was the perfect distraction from the feeling of the hole being burned right through the middle of my stomach. Good night everyone, see you in the morning. Maybe. Hold on now, transitioning to bathroom footage immediately after telling you how concerned I was about the aftermath of dinner is nothing to be afraid of. I just wanted to show you the mood lighting in here, that's all. During the night, I couldn't help but to dream about my buddy and fellow patron, Atodos Lados Aviation, who I assume can handle much spicier food than I can. And I'm totally jealous, of course. The second meal service started a little sooner than I expected, with three full hours of flying time remaining. I was so scarred from the dinner experience still that I just said, I'll take the least spiciest thing available when asked. As she walked away, I couldn't tell if she was laughing at me or with me. Mission accomplished. It's really hard to go wrong with a collection of dumplings, isn't it? Not only was it delicious and mild, but the way that it jiggled when poked was incredibly fun and satisfying. A roll cake and a plate of fruit was the perfect way to end the second meal service, as well as to restore the confidence I needed to make it to LA without my insides melting. Now, for as much as I belly ached about the food on this flight, do know that the quality of everything served the interactions with the cabin crew were top-notch. I'm just a picky guy, that's all. Nothing says, 
This is my first time in Singapore Airlines business class, more than not being able to figure out how to raise the seat. Yep, I needed help with this, as did most every other passenger, so even though these seats are extremely comfortable, they're far from intuitive. Welcome to Los... Oh, wait. This is footage of us executing a missed approach into 2-4 right, and the pilot made no excuses about it. He simply informed us that we were coming in too high and much too fast, that we had to go around and try again. Now, I appreciate the honesty of him admitting to his error, but that was slightly more information that I needed to know. Here comes that heartburn again. Alright, this is looking much better. Level, straight, and the approach speed appears to be correct. But then again, what do I know? That first approach was a lot cleaner than any approach that I've ever made in a flight simulator, and if it were me, I would have sent it all the way in like a boss. So what's the final verdict? Well, holy crap, holy mother of God, and holy spicy food. Despite the heat, I will say that the Singapore Airlines A350 business class product is one of the best premium airline products that I've ever tried. I will be doing this again, without the spicy chicken, of course. Finally, to all my patrons, thank you so much for supporting what I do. To the Rolling Troll and everyone else, you're always going to get first dibs on any spicy food that I can't handle. And of course, thanks to everyone else for watching, and if the coronavirus doesn't get me, I'll be back in two weeks kicking off more adventures from yet another trip to Asia and back. Until then, happy flying, and I'll catch you in the next one.